hey man, here's another Rick Rude story. And I think, no, it was a different uh, occasion. And maybe I told you this one before. If I did, stop me. All right, when I first started hunting in South Georgia, I'd been uh, I'd stopped hunting for a couple of years because I was in the wrestling business. Then I hooked up with Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff, who was a, just a deer hunting fanatic. And uh, so he goes, hey, man, I'm hunting down in South Georgia. Join my lease. So I did. And my gun was in Texas, so I had to buy me a new gun. So I said, well, hell, Paul, I don't know what caliber to get anymore. I was shooting a twenty two two fifty. He goes, no, man. He goes, 7 mag. He goes, you got to build a 7 mag. And so, sure enough, I'm a Remington guy, so I built a Remington 7 mag, put a Leopold scope on it, and that was my deer gun. So, a couple uh, years, uh, one year goes by, and uh, Rick Rude hears all the hunting stories me and Paul are, are talking about and decides he wants to join the hunting lease. Well, Rick doesn't have a gun. He's more of a fisherman. So, Paul tells him to build a gun, build a 7 mag. All three of us down there in South Georgia, Ryan, Georgia, to be specific, are shooting 7 mag. Well, Rick didn't know a damn thing about hunting. And I'm saying this, I I love Rick Rude to death. Uh, Rest in peace. But anyway, uh, one time, Paul wasn't there. And we were riding around on my four-wheeler because Rick Rude didn't have his yet. He would go on later to trade one of his Sea-Doo Wave Runners to one of the Steiner brothers for his four-wheeler. That's how he got his a little bit later. But anyway... So riding down the road, there's another guy on another four-wheeler, and he's showing us the different parts of the property. This is 2,000 acres, and a lot of it is swampland, and showing us some areas that I did not know about. And so we're riding down the road. I mean, it's a little dirt road in the middle of nowhere. And here comes a damn sow, a female pig, just trotting right down the road towards us. And the guy says, I didn't bring my gun because I didn't think he was going to see anything. We're just riding around on four-wheelers, but Rick had brought his gun. So the guy says, Damn, Rick, he goes, shoot that pig, shoot that pig. So Rick Rick gets down. I'm sitting right beside him. He's using my four-wheeler as a rest. I got my hands over my ears. All of a sudden, Rick, he fires. Click. Nothing happened. He ejects the shell, takes aim, pulls the trigger. Click. Nothing happens. Reloads. Takes aim fires click the bullets aren't firing okay he's shot three times he's got one more bullet he puts the final bullet in the barrel pulls the trigger click about that time the the pig was so close that she heard the click of the firing pin and ran off into the brush and we all stood up i'm like dude what the f and the guy rick's gun was so dirty from a mud hole we'd gotten in a couple of months earlier that the guy said man your firing pin is so dirty, it's not hitting the uh, primer. And uh, that didn't sound right to me. And I looked down to the ground, and the bullets looked real small. And a 7 millimeter bullet is pretty big. I looked down to the ground. I, I picked up three of the shells, and I held them and looked at them. And I said, dude, I said, these are 7 millimeter odd 8 bullets. These aren't 7 mag bullets. There's a smaller cartridge uh, which is a seven millimeter odd eight, uh, which is basically what what a neck down three oh eight, but it's a whole different cartridge than the seven mag. It's a little bitty bastard, but because he saw the seven mm, he didn't pay attention to the o eight. So I said, dude, I said, here's your problem. I said you're shooting seven odd eight bullets in a seven mag. Those things were rattling around in there. He's lucky one of them didn't just fluke and go off It would have, if it would have struck the primer. But, you know, that was hunting with Rick Rude. Uh, but, man, I tell you what, he wasn't the greatest hunter in the world. But you talk about a fun guy to hang out with, especially a guy uh, to talk about the wrestling business with. I was talking to uh, Scott Hall the other night on the phone. I gave him a call out of the blue just to see what he was doing. I talked to him about 30 minutes, check in, see how his uh, boy Cody's doing. Man, you know, him, Scott Hall and Rick Rude have a whole lot of the same common ground as far as the business or maybe some of their backgrounds. But uh, Scott Hall, a very, very savvy guy. He was breaking out some stuff that I had never heard about. And it's funny because everybody that goes down the road, kind of you learn the same things, but you go about learning it a different way or it goes in and sinks to a different level of 101, 201, 301. 
And uh, Scott Hall has been around a long time, so he had some real interesting stories. Uh, i got to have him back on the show because I had a good time talking to him. We were just shooting a breeze.